Intravenous catheter placement is a daily procedure for veterinarians and for veterinary technicians. It enables the reliable delivery of medication directly into the bloodstream, which is critical in anaesthesia and in the treatment of many conditions. This video provides a practical guide to the placement and management of peripheral venous catheters in dogs. Catheterizing veins consistently in patients of all sizes and in differing conditions requires true skill. If performed badly, the protocol can delay treatment, cause unnecessary pain to the patient, and in the worst case, result in life-threatening complications. Whilst it is a routine and commonly performed procedure, it is also invasive and as such carries risks of infection and compromise to welfare. Therefore, it should only be performed by trained veterinary professionals such as veterinarians and veterinary technicians. Once mastered, the procedure is quick and simple. The ease with which a vein can be catheterized will be influenced by many factors including body weight, breed, and general condition of the patient. Those with low blood pressure or systemic illness will be considerably more difficult to catheterize. Here we are talking about peripheral venous catheters, not to be confused with arterial lines or central venous catheters. A peripheral catheter provides access to a peripheral vein as compared to central catheters, which are typically placed in the jugular vein for intensive care and monitoring and require more advanced equipment to place and maintain. Arterial lines are placed in a peripheral artery and are used to closely monitor patient's blood pressure. The most commonly used type of peripheral catheters are over the needle catheters. These consist of a needle, also called a stylet, that inserts into a blunt-ended silicone tube. During placement, the needle is removed, leaving the patent tube within the vein through which the medications can be administered. Winged needles, also called butterfly needles, are sometimes used as an alternative to over-the-needle catheters. These are simply needles with plastic wings to help secure the needle to the leg. They may be used for short-term use. However, the needle can easily puncture the vessel wall leading to extravasation of administered medications and fluid. This can result in delayed delivery of treatments, significant pain, and even cause necrosis of surrounding tissues. Peripheral catheters provide venous access for the rapid and repeated delivery of medications, such as antibiotics and general anesthetic agents during surgery, directly into the bloodstream for the subsequent distribution throughout the body. Catheters can remain in place with regular maintenance care for up to five days. Common sites for peripheral catheterization in dogs are the cephalic and saphenous veins. The catheter is always placed in the direction of blood flow, so towards the patient's body. The cephalic vein is more commonly used for catheterization than the saphenous due to it being easier to access and less mobile under the skin and therefore easier to catheterize. Gather all the equipment you need before starting so that you have everything to hand. Catheters are often placed in the prep area where there are other procedures being undertaken, such as the urinary bladder expression and shaving and cleaning of the surgical site. Use a clean tray to keep all your IV catheter equipment together to minimize contamination from the environment and to avoid dropping equipment on the floor. Things you will need are a catheter and spares, micropore or elastoplast tape, chlorhexidine and alcohol swabs, clippers or shaving blade, and a tourniquet if you are using one. IV catheterization is an invasive procedure and breaks the protective barrier of the skin. Bacteria on the surface of the skin can enter the small incision risking cellulitis. Aseptic preparation of the site is therefore essential. Before starting the procedure, thoroughly wash your hands or put on clean gloves. Shave an area of the dorsal antibrachium large enough to palpate and visualize the vein, ensuring that your injection site 
and the hub of the catheter will remain in the shaved area. Next, perform a brief skin scrub with chlorhexidine or iodine, followed by a final wipe with alcohol. Avoid abnormal areas of broken skin, pyoderma or swelling. Raising the vein is a process of occluding the vessel above the injection site to slightly distend the vein with blood to aid catheter placement. This is best performed by an assistant who holds the limb laterally below the elbow, slightly extending the leg to minimise movement. The thumb is placed over the dorsal forelimb, applying gentle pressure and rolled from medial to lateral to move the cephalic vein onto the dorsal forelimb for easy access and improved stability of the vein. If an assistant is not available, a temporary ligature can be placed using bandage or similar material. Some dogs have veins that run up their leg like drain pipes, and palpation may seem like a pointless exercise. But palpation of every vein helps you to develop a familiarity with the subtle bouncy feel of a vein. In collapsed, small or overweight dogs, or breeds with thick skin or short legs, you will not be able to see the vein, and so palpation will be your only guide to its position. Palpation of every vein you catheterize will help you develop this skill, so that it is second nature when it comes to catheterizing veins that you cannot see. Once you have palpated the vein, visualize its path up the leg in your mind's eye. Your needle will need to follow this path to place the catheter within it. If you are unsuccessful on the first attempt, you can make another attempt in the vein more proximately, but not more distally. So it is often better to start distally, thereby leaving room to have another attempt proximately. Inform your assistant that you are about to start, so that they can be prepared for any reaction from the dog and minimize movement of the limb. Place your free hand under the dog's leg with your thumb alongside the vein to stabilize it. You can use this hand to gently grip from beneath the limb to make the skin slightly taut, which can aid the catheter needle as it moves through the skin. It'll also stabilize the vein, making it less likely to move around. However, be careful not to apply so much pressure that the vein collapses. Before entering the vein, your needle must first penetrate the skin, subcutaneous tissues and vessel wall. The skin is the toughest layer and requires slightly more force to push the needle through than the other layers. A sharp needle is essential to retaining control and needles quickly become blunt on repeated attempts. So it is better to change to a new needle than risk multiple failed attempts due to blunting. Always have the bevel of the needle facing upwards. Try to improve your technique to pass through each layer individually. You may need a slightly more perpendicular angle to enter through the skin. Once you are through the skin, lower the angle of your needle to enter the vein at a more acute angle. This will make it less likely that you will pass directly through the vein and out the other side. Again, visualize the path of the vein up the leg and align the direction of your needle to follow this path. You are now passing through the subcutaneous tissue, which requires minimal force on your needle. When you are confident your needle is at the vessel wall, you may need to apply subtle pressure to penetrate into the vein. As soon as you enter the vein, blood will flow up the needle and into the hub. When you see this flashback, you will know that the tip of the needle is within the vein. You now need to advance the catheter off the needle and into the vein. This is the most challenging step of the procedure. As you gain experience, you will develop the coordination to keep the needle completely still whilst moving the catheter forwards. When only the very tip of the needle is in the vein, there is a risk that it will come out and the catheter will not enter the vessel. You will develop a feel for advancing the needle a few millimetres into the vein before beginning to advance the catheter. Some people advance the catheter and hold the needle stable with the same hand. 
whilst others hold the needle stable with one hand whilst advancing the catheter with the other. Develop an approach that works for you. The vein will blow if the needle punctures the vessel wall and is removed, allowing blood to leak out into the subcutaneous tissues. Once the vein has blown, it is not possible to place the catheter. It should be immediately removed and pressure applied to the site. A cotton swab can be applied with tape to sustain pressure for a few minutes. Catheterization can then be attempted in the same vein higher up the leg or on a different vein. Common challenges include the needle coming out of the vein after the flashback is seen. This often occurs if the needle is not kept still at the stage of threading the catheter. Another common mistake is continuing to advance the needle once the flashback is seen, which can result in coming out the other side of the vessel. When you reposition the needle, the vein will then blow. Once the catheter has been advanced so that the hub is situated close to the skin and the silicone tubing cannot be seen, ask your assistant to readjust their grip by moving to just above your site of entry. This will prevent backflow of blood as you remove the stylet. As it is removed, you should see the slow flow of blood back through the catheter indicating it is in the vein. Insert the bung into the catheter to prevent spillage. Your assistant can now release the pressure on the vein. At this stage, the catheter can be easily dislodged if the patient moves, so you need to secure it as quickly as possible. Wipe up any blood spillages and tape the catheter to the leg with porous micropore or elastoplast tape Place one piece of tape under the catheter hub, around the limb, and then over the hub. Be careful not to apply tape too tightly, as this can be uncomfortable and interrupt normal blood flow to the lower limb. You should flush the catheter to check that it is patent and in the vein before administering medications or fluids. To flush, apply pressure above the catheter site to occlude the tip and prevent backflow of blood. Then remove the bung and attach a syringe of 1 mil normal saline or heparinized normal saline. Release your pressure on the vein. Now gently palpate the distal vein and observe the area whilst delivering the fluid. You should feel the vein distend slightly as the fluid enters the vessel. You should not see subcutaneous swelling at the catheter site. If you are uncertain, repeat the procedure. Subcutaneous swelling indicates that the catheter is not in the vein and you must remove the catheter and place a new one at a different site. Once you are confident the catheter is intravascular, you can connect the fluid line and administer treatments. Additional tape can be applied to secure the fluid line and add a bend to prevent force on the catheter itself should the line be caught. Again, be careful not to use too much tape or wrap too tightly. For catheters used for long-term administration of treatment, the catheter should be flushed every four hours to check for patency. Tape should be changed daily and the catheter sites visualized for signs of swelling, redness or discomfort, which may indicate signs of inflammation of the vein known as phlebitis. Where this is observed, the catheter must be removed and if necessary, a new one placed in a different vein. High quality silicone peripheral catheters can remain in place for up to five days, after which they should be removed due to the higher risk of thrombus formation at the catheter tip. A new catheter can be placed if ongoing treatment is required. To remove the catheter, either unwind the tape or cut the tape parallel to the limb. Take special care not to cut close to the catheter hub as detachment of the tubing within the vein can occur if the catheter has withdrawn slightly and the silicone catheter tubing is mistakenly cut. Potentially, this could have grave consequences for the patient. In summary, ensure you always palpate veins when you place a catheter so you can give yourself the best chance of a correct placement first time. Follow this guide and with practice, you will be able to place catheters successfully even in the most challenging of patients. 
If you are interested to get hands-on experience in all aspects of surgical best practice, then check out our training opportunities available at the WVS International Training Centres by clicking the link below.